Welcome back. Now with your five-day weather forecast, here's Jesse Baines. It still doesn't feel like spring and it won't for the next five days either. We can expect a little relief tomorrow with a high of plus five for the next four days. It'll be mainly cloudy today with a 40% chance of flurries. The temperature will dip to minus three tonight. Saturday we'll see a mix of sun and cloud, clearing in the afternoon with a low of minus three. Sunday will be sunny but cold with a low of minus five. Monday and Tuesday we can expect a mix of sun and cloud with a low of minus two on Monday and minus one on, on Tuesday. And that's your five day weather forecast. Now back to the newsroom. Thanks, Jesse. U.S. President Barack Obama wrapped up his visit to Israel today. Obama spent the day touring the country's most powerful na national symbols, including the official Holocaust Memorial. He paid his respects by laying a wreath in the Yad Vashem Memorial in honor of the six million Jews killed by the Nazis. President Obama is now in Jordan for his final stop of his visit to the Middle East. He is holding meetings with King Abdullah in the capital of Amman. The meetings are expected to focus on the Syrian refugee crisis. A Congolese warlord accused of war crimes has been flown out of Rwanda and is bound for the International Criminal Court in The Hague today. Bosco Teganda surrendered to the U.S. Embassy in Kigali four days ago. Teganda faces many charges, including recruiting child soldiers, murder, and sexual slavery. The International Court confirmed Teganda is on his way to the Netherlands, and a court date will be set soon. Back in Canada, the use of solitary confinement in Canadian prisons is growing, according to the Office of the Correctional Investigator. Segregation cells in federal penitentiaries grew by 600 prisoners since 2010. The OCI says female, Aboriginal and black inmates are disproportionately represented in segregation. The OCI also says that many mentally ill prisoners also end up in segregation cells rather than receiving treatment. A massive series of car crashes has, has left three people dead near Edmonton. A spring blizzard caused at least 100 car pile up yesterday, killing three people and seriously injuring three others. A 23-year-old woman, a 4-year-old girl and a 2-year-old boy died when the, the car they were in crashed head-on into a truck. The driver of the truck is facing several charges, including dangerous operation of a motor vehicle causing death. And to wrap up the budget, here are some highlights for consumers. Hockey moms, golf enthusiasts, and new parents can expect to keep more money in their pockets. There's a $76 million cut to tariffs on sporting goods and baby clothes. Finance Minister Jim Flaherty says the cuts are an attempt to bridge the gap in the price of goods between Canada and the United States. Smokers won't be happy. They'll see an 84% jump in excise duty for all manufactured tobacco. The cost to maintain a safety deposit box will no longer be tax deductible. First-time charity donors will receive an additional 25% tax credit and $8 million will go towards restoring and revitalizing Massey Hall. And now with your sports news, here's Andrew Millichamp. In OCAA action, Humber women's indoor soccer team won its semifinal game this morning, advancing the gold medal game against the Seneca Sting, which is just getting underway. Humber's the two-time defending champion and has won 11 of the last 15 OCAA championships. The men's team will be in the semifinals tomorrow. With a win, they'll play for gold, while a loss will land them in the bronze medal game. The Leafs came up short in the shootout last night to the Buffalo Sabres, losing 5-4. Kadri was the bright spot for the Leafs yet again, as he put up two goals and an assist for back-to-back -back three-point games. Kadri is now eighth in the league in scoring. After the game, he had this to say. You know, honest to God, I think we're making uh, you know, the right moves, and we're getting the goaltender to shift, but they're just making pretty good saves. And, um, you know, Rhymes is making also some great saves to keep us in it, but... Um, it's a tough way to lose in the shootout, especially when you battled so hard throughout the whole game. There are only four games in the NHL tonight. Pittsburgh is in New York to face the Islanders, while Calgary is in Columbus against the Red Hot Blue Jackets. The Jackets are undefeated in their last ten. In a strange quirk of the reduced NHL schedule, the Winnipeg Jets will be home to the Washington Capitals for the second night in a row. The Caps won 4-0 yesterday. And the late game will see Detroit visit Anaheim. The madness has begun and your bracket may already be in shambles after top seeds Oklahoma State, New Mexico, UNLV and Pittsburgh all hit the showers early. There are 16 games going on today, but the big names will draw most of the attention. Number two seeds Duke and Georgetown are both in action, with Duke facing Albany while Georgetown will look to start their run against Florida Gulf Coast. And number one seed Kansas is going up against Western Kentucky. Meanwhile, Indiana will play James Madison. Now I hope you didn't bet against the number one seeds because in 112 matchups since the tournament expanded to 64 teams in 1985, a number 16 seed has never beaten a number one. In fact, the first single digit margin of 15 years was last year. That being said, number one seed Gonzaga only won by six yesterday. The Toronto Raptors are going to squeak sneakers with the New York Knicks tonight. 
The Raps host the Knicks in the first of a home and home series. They play in New York on Saturday. Toronto has lost two in a row and will be looking to turn it around. They've won the last two meetings with the Knicks. Also in the NBA, the Miami Heat will put their win streak on the line when they host the Pistons tonight. And the Toronto Blue Jays are in action again today. They're at home facing the Boston Red Sox. The big news out of Jays land though is Ricky Romero's start yesterday. Romero took to the mound against Pittsburgh Pirates minor league Class A team and got lit up. Well that's it for sports, now back to the newsroom. Thanks Andrew. That's all for Humber News today. Thanks for joining us. I'm Marco DeMeo. And I'm Samantha Martin. Humber News is written and produced by journalism students at the North Campus. You can also catch us on YouTube. We'll see you next time.